Welcome, everybody, to yes. another episode of Stoke Your Creative Fire Summit, Turn Your Angst Into yes. Art. And today we have, oh my goddess, we have the Brothers Corin. Time to do it, John. Yes. Woo! Oh, no. No worthy, no worthy. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we have so much fun okay, fangirling and everyone that we asked to be in the summit we are literally fangirling so we're very excited about it all right joy you want to yeah, we've talk got, a little bit about the brother isaac and toral corin the brothers corin they are on a mission to hear the world's song one big voice at a time and with over 20 years of experience recording teaching and empowering others through transformational leadership. I think creativity should go in your bio too. And touring the world as the kin and the brothers Corin, the work continues to grow and expand the space for creative expression, leading people toward a more embodied life experience. And they've performed with live on Conan, earned a gold record, performed for over a million people while touring the cold side with Coldplay, Pink, Rod Stewart, and Don Jovi, and with Tony Bergen. <laughs> we had so much fun playing with you guys this summer oh my God, it was great to really see you in action it was yeah. live amazing this is a total gift having you here thank you joy yeah. thank you tony well it's always a pleasure to be with Privilege. you we hadn't even started recording and we're having too much fun so <laughs> to be here stoking Let's never ran it in each other's creative fire and uh i may love we be that glorious campfire because we uh we are the fire to gather around, aren't we? And yes. so, and so, are, in here. and so are you, uh, those that are listening. Um, it's time to stoke yours. And yours is waiting us. for you. Absolutely. So we just um, so honored that you're here. I'm personally working with the brothers. In case you guys haven't heard about it, writing and getting into another facet of my creativity. So I wanted to ask them because I've I've learned a lot about them over the last you know year, and it's been very deep. And I wanted to ask you guys, and you could both share the story. You know, um, in what way have do you feel like you have healed a part of you through mm. your music, through your creativity, through mm. what you do? And mm. and any story is is welcome here. Yeah. We, we have a beautiful safe container. Nice. Thanks. I love your firstly the by byline or the, uh, the second subject line of turn your angst into art mm -hmm. oh, isn't yeah. that what art is for mm. so mm -hmm. you know in our experience we've well we both found music separately for that purpose i would say that that probably is the the first purpose you know in my how food, did music heal you well i'd say i found it right in this space Uh oh, there we go. Uh, oh, there we go. midlife Close. crisis. Are you back? Did we freeze? Did we freeze? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, you guys oh, froze. What a, what a moment to freeze. You were in a space and you stayed in the space. Do you know what? Yeah, you were like in a space and then it just froze in the space. <laughs> <laughs> it was right. right we're back. I, we're back. So we, yeah. mom had a midlife crisis. Uh, fabulous. Our mom did have a. Uh, well, firstly, she had a chain. Fabulous. She had a chain. <laughs> Our mother had yes, a, change, I, I a sudden change of heart mm -hmm. about uh, wanting to be married to our father uh, when we were on a ski trip. And when we came back from the ski trip, she announced it to him and our family that things were going to be changing. And uh, I was only 12 years old. And it was Ooh. in that space, in that kind of shock, in that trauma. Mm. Of course, it was the 90s and we were a very sheltered family. So we didn't know what divorce meant. It's funnily, mm -hmm. funny to think about it now. Slash it was our worst you know, nightmare. So. Of course. Yeah. It was almost, I, I put it in a space for my like little psyche of uh, when you don't know something is not possible, mm. then mm. it leaves the greatest distance Ooh. to fall because yes. you don't know, yeah. you don't know. Mm. And uh, I think back to the stories of uh, the Aboriginal people standing on the shores of Australia, seeing the white settlers in boats Oof. a boat coming toward wow. the shore and not the sort seeing. of ancient stories of like not being able to see what it was because it wasn't something that was right. conscious to see. And it's such a wild, that's mm. such a wild metaphor. Yes, but it felt it. like that to my, yeah. to mm. my system. And so it was in those first couple months that in that same gap, I found the guitar and it felt like this like friend, like when mm. I didn't have anyone else to turn to, it felt like a, 
It felt oh, like this beautiful. extension, this something I could be held in or hold in my hands mm -hmm. and yes. see myself in. Mm. You know? Who gave you that first guitar? Gosh, I guess mum. I guess wow. mum did, right? Yeah, at the uh, same time. I found it. Wow. I saw someone playing the guitar in a classroom and I kind of, I'd play piano a little bit, but and I was natural at it, but it wasn't a passion at all. Mm. When I saw the guitar, I was like, ah, oh, that mm. at the time. Of course, I've fallen in love with piano now. But yeah, so I think our mother recognized that. Yeah, it was as if right in that space, she recognized the need mm. and it mm. became my friend. And so I say that would be the first time mm. music mm. Yes. began to fill the space or, mm. and, and so nice. give me art started to space. save me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wow, right from the beginning, right from the pre-adolescent. Yeah. 12, Ooh. yeah, 12. Oh, I know, I know. A friend I mean, in the darkness. Yeah. No, I hear you. I, I got, I mean, I got divorced, but, you know, it was so common at this point. Everyone knew whatever, what you know, what divorce was and who might get divorced and whatever. But I, I do get it. And I have boys and I, I really respect that you, like, found that friend, that deep friend to have an emotional relationship with, because that's mm. what it is. It's an yeah. emotional relationship with somebody, with something, you know? Absolutely. What about you? What about you, Isaac? Yeah, I'm curious. Thank you. Yeah, it's, well, it's household. just fascinating uh, hearing that story again with your um, receptive space, space, because mm. it's always different, isn't it? It's beautiful. Um, what came to me was that I was always a, ch um, I was always a child that knew too much and carried that burden. Like I Ooh. saw the demise of their relationship behind that veil subconsciously, always read it and was always outwardly afraid of it to my mother. Um, and so it was this like long time coming true of a betrayal that I'd f been afraid of. Mm. Um, and so it was mm. a different wound for me and I kind of went into mm. anger first was mm -hmm. my kind of resistance, mm -hmm. like knocked out mm -hmm. of my being. But two days before mm -hmm. our mother said the words, the like enacting words to our father, that yeah. igniting moment for both of us. So it's like, even though I was three and a half years older, it was this one moment that was like, whoosh, you know, and like we were, you know, in the new world, so to speak. Yeah. You know, like, journeys, you yeah. Know? Um, 12 and, 15 and um so uh two days before our mother did that i had my really my my only really proper oral you know encounter of a voice i had a voice come to me mm. and i was listening wow. to angry you know teenage angry music yes <laughs> um, in my headphones Tarl was sitting on the on the bed right. playing a guitar i, I don't know you must have toured with it traveled to ski it was our first trip to america so we were like in this Wow. The place that we would end up geomantically like, oh. on this energy space together yeah. in a room in, Colorado, in a basement yeah. in Jackson Hole. Oh, my and why well, I'm here. And you were on the bed playing Blue Moon. And I was listening to heavy music. The sound cut out, as I remember it, recall. Oh. And it was simply just this deep voice that said, you will sing mm. with a smile mm. on its face. It sounded wow. like, like it just like this cosmic wow, carrot yeah. and oh. and i ripped off the, the the cans and i'm like did you just hear that tara was like <laughs> what stop playing <laughs> and i'm like you didn't hear that no oh. what was it it was a voice and like <gasps> i remember like all the blood draining from my shoulder arms and like and i'm like oh it just said you will sing and like i swallowed you know dry mouth you know like in shock <laughs> and he was like huh wow Maybe you will you know, and then we kept playing. And um, I ignored it, of course, as any oh, right. as any anyone teenager that ignores would do. <laughs> all of these, you know, cues, strong cues, reach right. out from the other dimension, you know, whatever. My guide, mm. my higher spirit, however you want to see it. Jesus, I don't know. Um, right. You know, Indeed. the Magdalene. Um, so, you know, reaching out and saying, telling me that, and then going through this ringer, you know, just a broken. Right broken hearts you know like a broken hearts that's what i felt when you both told the story i imagine this like yeah. beautiful image of, like a stick and then you just when the stick gets snapped and like you just mm -hmm. can't no matter what you do like you can't get yeah. it back together you know, and it so happened funny, twice they... for me in two yeah. in six months oh i'll just finish the story it happened Please. twice for me in two in six months because i myself fell in love for the first time which mm -hmm. and she beautifully ceremoniously stomped on my heart unknowingly oh. 
Ooh. You know, mm. she left me for a 26 year old who gave oh. her a snowboard. And I was like, how do you compete? Ouch. Oh. You know, anyway, yeah. but in that first six months, it was like a boom, boom, right? Mm. Like just in case yeah. you were like on your knees, here you go, get oh. onto the ground, you know? And then my best friend at the time, Yaniv, who you would love and still plays, Sam Jewell, check him out. He's in Sydney. Yeah. He was playing a mean guitar and just like, just the jams, you know, like those high school jams. And he looked at me through these, this hair of his and he was like, sing for me, Zach. And that request was so oh, profound. Wow. And I tell I you, please request <laughs> the other. people you love and trust you because they need oh. you to make these yeah. requests. Edge, yes. you know, <laughs> give people an edge. Yes. How, yes. You know, create a safe space to, to like be that beautiful person to like mm. change someone's life. Mm. And he said, sing mm. for me. And so I did. And he was like, I didn't know you could sing. And I said, I can't. And he was like, and that voice came out. He oh. said, bullshit. And, <laughs> and he said, you've got a job. You're singing for my band. I'll teach you the lyrics. We've got a gig in two weeks. Congratulations. You know, good luck. Oh, I'm still just like, goodness. whoa. But, you know, and since well, thank then, you to that brother. Oh, my God. Then music and my voice, like the sound and like the appreciation and the recognition of my own voice mm. is mm. the very healing that I'm here to receive, you know. Mm. And so when we can all wake up to the fact that what right. we're looking for right. is in the very resonance that we are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So mm -hmm. anyway, that's what you need help me. Of, there's a lot of angst in those stories, you know. It, They're beautiful. Some, sometimes we are, uh, you know, given given things to process, and that art is is a safe place to process it, right? So it's like, yeah. what a what an opportunity. It's, it's such an interesting story. The way you're telling it, it feels so hero's journey to me. Mm. It feels so epically like, you know, it's so interesting. I, I had a card reading the other day, and. Um, one of the blocks in my card reading was this block, which is like this happy family picture with a rainbow over it and everything. And they said, this is what you, this is what you most wanted and what you didn't have. So it remains as a block in your life. And I thought about it in terms of my personal life with my family, with my kids, with everything. It's just really interesting how that story is so significant for so many people. So thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. well, thanks for it really up. appreciate that. Way. Yeah. Fantastic. Now we just want to ask you what your, what's your, what's your stories. <laughs> that's our, that's our mode. Um, right. Curiosity. Well, that's of right. Course. Joy, you had a question. I could see it coming. Well, I'm just thinking that through that experience of what you had a choice, you had a choice through that heartache and the, the gift of the tool came to you and that was creative expression. Mm -hmm. um, and it was music for both of you. Mm -hmm. Well, thank the collaborate. gods because yeah. you're brothers and look at what's happened since. <laughs> Let's I, go, go on with the about, question. Yeah. About that. Yeah, about that and how you connected both of your stories together and said, mm -hmm. we are going to do something. And, and where you are now is you're really, yeah. I, we, could, we could jump there, but I don't want to jump there yet. I want to know the story of the bridge, how you yeah. got together and created music. Because you, you keep healing which through lifetime? the stories, obviously. We'll tell you about this lifetime. Which lifetime would you like to talk about? <laughs> oh, now we're going somewhere, brothers. Yeah. I That's mean, firstly, it. as brothers, we, we spoke, uh, you know, we came out as partners in crime. You know, like mum would say she would catch us, like, story. having our own conversation. Well, can I tell the dramatic you know? one just real quick? She's in the kitchen making spinach pie, total hippie family. Oh, that sounds good, right? Right. Now new baby that she fought like Tara was a miracle baby like she fought for four years and he resisted or whatever <laughs> That's whatever the story, the story Apparently is I've been, I was you know, resisting but it was a the womb. it was a fun I know it I've been on my own you know trying to have another child and I know that like longing that she felt anyway mm. he's here yay right what a gift and I would be I was in the other room the front room all the way down the hallway she knew I was with him she was cooking dinner suddenly she heard this scream like piercing scream she runs down probably with the wooden spoon in her hand oh, no. runs down the hallway to find him just screaming with laughter oh <laughs> and she was like from then on i trusted that you two had this language that was far beyond what you know and you know oh, so we did wow. and all the way through life there was there was always this kind of difference but this kind of simpatico this like when yeah. we played cricket, for example, if anyone is Australian or you know European enough to know, 
that's that's a ball and a bat. Yes. You know, yes. He was the batter. I was the bowler. I think and everyone knows. <laughs> he's he's the uh, tenor. I'm the baritone. You know, it kind of yeah. There was always a compliment fit in that way. You know, there was a compliment, and also there was always like a desire to kind of set out in a similar direction. That was just naturally there. Yeah. Mm. But we spent mm. some time apart, and we we reconnected. I'd moved to New York, kind of for high school, and Isaac had gone to university and we kind of before meeting in new york we kind of met back up around our dad's second wedding and mm. we got there a handful of days before the wedding and said hey you got him a gift and i was like no <laughs> we're both broke and what do and you get like, your dad you get for the second wedding we're still <laughs> wedding gift we're still <laughs> kind of trying to digest this horrifying very wedding. awkward gift done. giving <laughs> yeah like, uh, like, should no, we should the we gift is in? we're here right <laughs> like we're at the wedding yeah. we were you wrote a song didn't you well, we were hiding in the bathroom to talk about it. Right. And then, you know, we both realized that neither of us had enough money to buy a gift. So we started probably talking about music. And oh, then, we just thought, let's write a song. Let's write a song. Let's write a song. Oh, I bet it's beautiful. We hadn't really, we well, like one day, maybe like a couple of years before, like smoked a joint as teenagers and like sung a harmony together once. And we're like, whoa, be, whoa. That, that would be cool. And so we wrote this song <laughs> oh, wow. and it was like dead, dead, like deadpan like simon and garfunkel like pretty oh. song we wrote we can just sing you a cappella the very oh, first thing yes, we give it give it give it yeah. it was under the influence like Torold said of mary jane but okay. anyway it's still you, here creative fire I you don't the, need you don't that. need a drug <laughs> What is this the first thing we ever wrote? Just it is. Yeah, really. Well, okay. I can't believe we're getting this this story yeah. right now. Yeah. I'm so excited. I feel honored. Thank you, you so much. Please. You say you don't care about the clothes you wear, and you say you don't care that if you're playing. as far as we got because i think you know we, got we were stunned foggy, yeah. <laughs> we were really so, stunned <laughs> yeah why we don't oh, wow. when we're writing we we, we use uh, the life force because we usually complete ideas these are really long stories we yeah, are these are, great stories, these are great stories wow. <laughs> we finished the song for our dads we did wedding that night and mm -hmm. told him we were both obviously blown away by harmonizing together yeah and uh it was this long song about seeds being planted in the morning sun it was very Yes. It's very abstract. new age and yeah. abstract. I love it. And harmonious. And we, we told him the next morning, oh, we've written this song for you. And he was like, oh, you should sing it at the ceremony. You Little know? did And we were know. like, oh, okay. So we, we the song was... rehearsed it a bunch. It was at least seven minutes long. <laughs> oh, um, I love it. <laughs> I had nine, no idea about nerves. time. I think we would like, you know, traversing time. <laughs> lost it in, long in the long story short, we sang yeah. at the wedding. Everyone loved it. there were tears. Yes. But then by minute five, dad checked his watch. Oh. Because uh, it was so long. It was too long. <laughs> but it was our first song ever. So we didn't have parameters. But that, what we discovered in that connection was mm. not we should. I feel like it was less we should do this together. And it was more we can't not do this together. Right. Mm. If, if you ever had a distinction of like that in your life. Yeah. It yeah. was that. It was more like, well, we have to. Like, right. We, we can't not do this. Not. And. So it wasn't too long after that that we met back up in New York City and said, well, let's head out into life. We're here in New York. Surely success will be, you know, a week away. There you go. Who do we know <laughs> in the New York, you know, music scene? Oh, no one? Well, who <laughs> let's just try. And we were both <laughs> naive and the rest yeah. is... History, uh, but history. amazing history. I mean, seriously, you, you guys have done incredible things that people dream of. I mean... You know, just to circle back, I know there's so much to the story of, of you two. I just know that some of your songs, I've listened to many of your songs in recently because I only met you recently. I never knew the Kin. And now the Kin songs are also amazing. Um, like Everything's Changing Now. I mean, that's one of my favorites and you played it at Omega. But there's mm -hmm. a couple of songs on the newest album that are so moving to me personally. Like when I listened to More Than You Know, I knew there was something in that yeah. song, but I didn't know. And do you, do you feel like, I mean, I hate to put you on the spot like that, you know, Toral, but did that song actually, was that part of your healing, do you believe? Or how Absolutely. do you, how do you encapsulate, how do you heal when you're writing your music? <laughs> well, firstly, 
more than you know which is off the new brothers current album you know fast forward to only a, f- a few years ago uh and i had had a son born with a critical brain injury who died at birth so mm. his name was jack and in his 14 month life um in the middle of that experience he's he passed away january of 2020 we also were answering the call that it was time to make a brother's album and you know jack was really a big part of it mm-hmm. jack couldn't um swallow uh, he needed 24-hour care from mm-hmm. nurse to us mm. uh which is unlike anything <sighs> that you have to stand by a human being and make sure they don't drown in, in their own saliva is a really un, mm. uh, indescribable experience as Oof. a parent. And somehow, you know, we had chosen to live life to the fullest. He lived at home with us. And um, we just knew to center him in the middle of music and be with him. Mm. And what we discovered in that process was that he was so musical, mm. such a muse mm. for our art. Mm. And also, mm. you know, writing this album, you know, our grief, our trauma of family trauma uh, yep. had a space to uh the mm. album gave mm. it space to write about and the song more than you know was really a song we wrote uh, as a family our mother's lyrics uh in the song um mine isaac oh, wow it gave us like a a canvas to begin to even remotely wrap ourselves around the experience that jack jack was in real time mm-hmm. and just to watch our mother write those words you know i think in so many ways our mother struggled uh with the mortality immortality of watching her son and grandson go through that yeah you know, yes of course someone yeah. really needed to write that song and i think um mm-hmm. even more remarkable is that the song was written because we were listening to jack make a sound and jack could make sounds of course he was only at the time 10 months old mm. but he could not really communicate in anything else but occasionally when he was comfortable he would start to hum mm. like, ah, ah. it was like this it was, it was he was cooing he, it he was did this so beautiful thing as he would you know struggle to breathe and but i he would swear calm down. he could he would sing in tune in harmony with the guitar oh like my god every oh. time Woo. Mm-hmm. It, so yeah. you know what jack my little nephew taught me was that even incapacitated Mm. even without ability Mm. he had a voice oh oh yeah and so true so deep so much of his consciousness his his wisdom would come through the resonance Mm. of his voice to us so like Todd said we kind of we 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 had this crazy request in the middle of this to 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 sing to record to write music and mm. what a gift that was ken rockwood of rockwood music hall in new york requested to said oh, i want to yeah. sign you i want to make an album and it couldn't have been more a medicinal time because Oof. we didn't know we needed to grieve into song and like yes. said, as a, grieve as into song too, i love that as a family because we weren't agreeing like tarled said there was like a great divide in our family mm. of uh, in the way we were understanding what had happened Mm. Mm. half of us were calling it a tragedy okay mm. the other half was saying yeah. i wouldn't take it back Ooh, right yeah, that's a lot that comes through in the, the song because you can feel the song in such a deep way really expanding love like you can feel it because it's like just keeps elevating and elevating and elevating and elevating and elevating it's like it has no choice but to give to to take you i i just want to say like what a, I, I don't want to in any way like i just want you know i love you so much and i'm so sorry you went through that and you know the song is a song but yeah. it's it's the process of how you did that how you took your grief and you said it grief into song and you put it into this music and it's actually helping other people too. Like, I know that that sounds crazy, but like when I hear it or when other people hear it, I'm sure that they are moved. I mean, you can't not be moved. Mm. So I'm just saying thank you for that. I know that must have been absolutely excruciating. I'm a mom. I understand that, that mm. pain. I'm a human being. You know, we understand this pain, but to feel that pain. Ooh. Mm. Thank you. So, thank you. It yeah. Was, uh, 
deepest Remarkable. levels. Thank you. Yeah, well, we we can't make sense of everything that occurs in life, but we can certainly make space for it to be um, mm. experienced, digested, metabolized. You know, art I love when you use those words space. like process. Mm -hmm. Art gives us space to what we can't understand in the body becomes trauma if we let it stay un yes. unfelt. Um, mm. We can't always control how we understand something. We can keep showing up to it. Mm. And song not just dissolves art, I should say, not just dissolves the barriers between us as human beings and mm. lets us see ourselves in each other's art, but it also allows the person letting that art come out of them dissolve those barriers to mm. ultimately um, be in right relations with the experiences we have, right? And that's mm. what, and we're biased, but that's what we believe <laughs> in music do in such a remarkable way that uh, we can't grasp um, with our faculty only. We have to grasp with all of our, all of us. And we know this to be true, that music we're so is- so with you. We are 100% in agreement. You know, you're biased, we're biased in the same way. We are. Yeah. And I, I love what you're saying about using the music as a way in and through. And as performers, you've, you have a gift and you chose to to pay it forward to include people into i believe you know really a lot of what we do with tony and i do is we t talk about taking back the body taking back the dance taking mm. back the voice giving yes. it back to the people mm. you know and i and i feel like we we've really got it crazy out here with art as a performative and it's really for the people it's how we've always processed and been able to um, create culture and Absolutely. create healing and what you're doing now is really that inclusivity using your gifts and bringing it to the people mm. so i'd like to hear a little bit about how you see that and what that that is for and if you could just speak more towards that i think what you're saying is how we bring hold a space to invite others voices to come to the surface yes uh, yeah. bring it back to the people you know bringing music voice song I, these are ancient yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> ancient uh gifts that we've all um forgotten that is for everyone you know it's so exactly. funny people, like when you go everyone has a voice people are like cliche right. but it's mm -hmm. so not mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah it's so not it's a, a true natural born gift that and we truly did gather around the fire mm. yes. together after feasting surely weekly as tribal humans oh for sure and to begin to grieve and spread and and feel joy and bliss and mm -hmm. celebrate what it felt like to be alive mm. not just watching like the main singer but right right all of us like and inclusive yeah. there's no separation you know music and dance both take away the concern for time right yes so suddenly and space too in a way because portals we're, yes we're purely in that sacred geometric form that our brain knows how to decipher from who knows where this magic of music and awareness was mm -hmm. given to us you know we don't know was it was it uh, just evolutionary like darwin would say or is it right. you know pleiadian consciousness that was given to us at a certain mm -hmm. moment in time yeah. but who knows and really who cares because we have it right yes we have this gift babies have it we all have it yes. and we've been taught to not trust it but yes so to to just go into it and then automatically we're brought back to into a remembrance mm -hmm. when we move yeah, we're brought back into a remembrance you know and we're waking up to dare to remember who we really are you know? we get to we get to do that which is to boldly invite people to remember theirs right and it started seven years ago kind of together uh, we've yes. been both doing it in separate ways um sort of literally as a voice teacher i've been doing it since i was a teenager we were doing it as a band i mean we were doing it as a we band would too. circle people yeah. up you know absolutely just like brotherly you know yeah. like yeah. whether it's our fans or whatever we just would always be just frustrated with that fourth wall like yes. don't project onto us <laughs> 
your yeah. thing with us yeah be with us and sing along right yeah. i love when us. you did that at the music right? hall you were like in the middle and we were all singing with you it was so oh, epic and of course okay. at omega you know we did it together you know i want to share something from all of this that you're saying this is exactly what we want to do it's like we want to like just pop the culture bubble of even social media such a is such oh. a it really just is such a um no no offense to social media but it's really negative in terms of how people have to present themselves in a very specific way in order to feel comfortable to post anything when in reality, what we're doing as 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 teachers and spiritual spiritual teachers and emotional process, you, you do what I do. It's just a different exact method. But mm -hmm. we what we're doing is we're breaking that culture bubble and we're saying we're going to give this mm -hmm. back to all of us because we want to create performance pieces with people. We want to create, you know, like theater, dance, singing, mm -hmm. songwriting. I mean, I came to you because there's a burning creator in me that can't stop wanting to create. Mm -hmm. And when I saw you and heard you and your messaging and how creativity is your tool, I mean, there's no question you ought, you happen to be extremely talented musicians, but there's a way that you guide people and to make us feel safe enough to all start singing mm -hmm. again and writing. And mm -hmm. I'm writing songs I never wrote before. And some of them are scary to me and I'm so excited to be recording with you and you know, letting myself out of that, you know, terror uh, place. Mm -hmm. So I have a question for you. How do you talk to your students about that, about knowing that everyone is innately creative, everyone is innately full of stories, everyone is innately has a voice. What if they're terrified? What would you offer like for today well, for anyone who's watching? Exciting. You know, being terrified yeah. is a damn good <laughs> sign. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> right? And obviously in a safe space, right? So only as much as you're willing to, to handle and to, Absolutely. you know, the, your nervous system wants to chew on at, 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 at a time, right? Yeah. But the safer mm. the space, the more we can handle, mm. right? The more we can, mm. you know, dare to, to, yeah. to have the courage to share. But, you know, terror, so to, to answer that first question, terror or fear in equal measure with excitement is kind of like mm. the litmus for let's go, right? Like let's, mm. let's dare to just, you know, release what's coming through your voice yeah. and your musicality and your creative genius. But, mm -hmm. you know, we, we would say to those that there, you know, there is no like blockage, <laughs> creative block or feeling like you're not creative is all in the mind. Um, mm -hmm. Because by essence, we our bias yeah. is that you're constantly being creative. Mm. And, you know, we have games and practices that we do with our clients every day to just give them that creative data that, that like yeah. proof after proof that that constantly they are writing songs they are they are shedding poetry when yeah. they're ordering their coffee Whether they don't know talking to their best not. friend they're constantly <laughs> you know and it's subconscious right and when we tap into the subconscious or the automatic parts of our brain we're actually opening the floodgates and you realize that you have the ability to channel great works of art on a Tuesday <laughs> and the only person in your way is you know your prefrontal cortex blah blah um, blah blah blah, blah. exactly <laughs> and the prefrontal cortex going oh no oh no oh no oh no oh no oh no I gotta figure yeah. this out and do the thing that I was told to do yeah. all along which is try yeah but let's you let's know, let's take a moment that's kind and of pause in this great epidemic get out of that pandemic phrase of overthinking because i, I, <laughs> yeah. I just want to make sure anyone who's listening gets what we're saying because like we're we're talking like very deep about this subject but the basic yeah thing is if you're right, thinking well, about creativity and yeah. you're thinking about what might be good or what might be better or what do i what knowledge do i need to seek to finally do something good you're already not there because the access point to your greatest brilliance is to come out of the front brain mm. to us. Nothing wrong with knowledge and gathering uh -huh. evidence. It's another mm. thing, but it's to come back from that and to mm -hmm. come back into an embodied play, mm. which requires something like that, that is very terrifying for a lot of us, which yeah. is to trust that something might come. Yes. Worth following. Now that could be silent, like a body movement or a dance that you haven't done in 30 years, or it could be like, the beginning of an idea for a business that your heart wants mm. to do, but there's all these reasons why not. Or it stroke. could be the beginning of a painting or a beginning mm. of a song or the, the first like mm, that you've sung mm. in 10 years. And that might be the first note. Mm. You go to the piano and you're like, mm. and 
your brain's going, oh, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. You can't write a song. You've never written a song. How do you write a song? And you're like, danger, no, danger. Right. Here's my first two notes, mm. my song. Mm. Maybe that's where it starts. Mm. And it starts by following the simple mm-hmm. breadcrumbs of something mm. that's wanting to come to you. And we're in an epidemic of trying to think about what's good or better or what might work rather than trusting what wants to come. And that's really what we're talking about here is that to stoke Absolutely. your own creative fire has to start by first. And in practice, we say instead of no, which is that front brain, you know, something's wrong with this idea. Follow it. Yeah. Tr- trust it. What if yeah. every first idea you ever had just was a yes and for you, you know, like, oh, yes. And, mm-hmm. you know, what, could you be that generous with yourself mm-hmm. as if generous. you were your best mate going, oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Sing for me. Yes. And Aww. what else? Yes. And what else? Like mm. to yeah. us, that's the, that's the kind of ingredients for creativity for, for us. And that's our bias. Mm-hmm. There's so many ways to get creative. Wow. This is oh. just what we've discovered in yeah. our life yeah. is that, yeah. you know, if we just keep saying yes to our voice mm-hmm. and keep valuing it enough to track it, make a voice note, get up at 3 a.m. and write that idea. <laughs> You know, like uh, write a page, in the bathroom. write a page of, of just how you feel today. Yes. You know, and trust yes. that something might come out or might not, but don't, don't concern yourself with that. Just let it come and mm-hmm. you know, set aside five minutes, you know, don't wait. Mm-mm. It's easy to do, to not do this, but don't wait for like that great month in 2023 when you right. finally <laughs> go to the South of France and write your, and, and, and like right. do one piece of art you've been waiting. Mm. Just try it for five minutes today. You know, oh, absolutely. And even if you, you have know. to like go on a little break Me at too. work I and go to the advice. bathroom and close the doors and go five minutes, you know, what was that idea coming to me? You know, cause I'm mm-hmm. worth it. My voice five, is worth five it. minutes. Um, and I you know, it doesn't have that. to be in every day, but anytime you like, instead of thinking about when you'll be creative, yeah. be creative for a moment and notice that you originally talked about being terrified and terrified to me is where there's a little bit more resistance than forward uh, trust, mm-hmm. right? So there's going to be resistance. In fact, like Isaac said, there has to be, there has to be both. And that's when you know you're onto something. Mm, yes. I would say the amount of times when someone comes and goes, oh my God, like what you're doing is amazing. I totally get it. And it's just a flow for me. They don't work with us. You know, who works with us is someone right. who understands they've got just a tad more resistance than forward momentum they're like i need some brothers you know, like, <laughs> oh, i love that it's kind of like how that's we are beautiful. too exactly and so i think no. what you're looking for is that part of yourself that's going yes hell no yes right no, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> and right there with that tension is that's where we want to just lean in and just know that the terror is a great indication i think that's what isaac was trying to say too hmm. that's the indicator yeah. to do it anyway you know, I loved, I mean, everything you're saying is so resonant with me. I'm, I'm hundred percent with you. you. Even, even, you know, even though I, I teach expression, you know, all the time, I still have moments where I'm like, oh my God, I should put that up or should I post that or da, 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 da. do I let myself be seen even more fully? Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the things that I think so many people really want to be seen more fully. And they just, they just, they rather say, oh, I'm not willing to take the risk. Mm-hmm. And it's just too, it's just, it's too much, but then there's that part of us that like the, some of us have this burning in us where if we don't get to be seen, we'll be like full of regret. So that's kind of also, I find that interesting tension between fear and excitement, like you were talking about. For me working with you, cause I personally worked with you and Joy now has experienced you as well. I got to work with you and I'm writing songs with you and creating music with you. And it's, it's so exciting and it's also scary, but I love it so much. But it's really brought me into a whole nother level of confidence around being a creator and because I've been dancing for like most of my life but now that I'm I wrote you know a whole album like three or four or five years ago now and this is like a whole new wave of creativity for me much more raw much more real and much more about turning my angst into art as you know my songs are kind of intense yeah. and we're working with them and you keep saying yes yes go for that do the she's as a little girl hiding under the table like do the like no she won't you know go for the drama yeah. like and and that catharsis is really helping me to grow uh, to, yeah, to, and, and then to look at my story in a new light. I really, we really mm-hmm. honor you for that. What would you say you've healed 
you know, in, in the creation of this album or, mm. or your healing? Ooh, well, first of all, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm revealing myself in a way of a, a most, I, I, I hid my vulnerability for a long time. I mean, Joy has been mm. one of my best friends for so many years. And whenever I would cry, she'd be like, oh my God, that's something. That's, that's it. something. I will tell you, I will tell you always if it. <laughs> so when I get to reveal myself in a real, more authentic way, and that's fear of, of you know, that's, that's old childhood garbage and things that I've been working on for years to really be authentically seen without it being like a needy thing. It's about, I want to do it because I want to express myself to this world before I die. Cause I came here with certain energy and certain amount of enthusiasm that I'm supposed to share. And um, even if it's painful, yeah. so for me, it's been a vulnerability journey and about, and for letting, you know, you guys see me and hear my stories and help me mm -hmm. weave them into songs. And I hope that you'll be special guests in my program that I'm going to be doing about creating, you know, one person experiences shows where you turn your angst into art and there's a song, there's a dance, there's a poem, there's a this, there's a that, you know, um, of course, you know, I'm going to ask you to, to do more things with me. <laughs> Lay um, my head down on my shoulders. Oh, Lay your head down with me. Yes, that's Ooh. it. He's already doing the harmony. It's already in his head. Because you're safe right here with me. <laughs> so it's safe to feel yeah, emotion, right? Yeah. yeah. I think that's really what it is. And I think that creativity, you know, you both told me stories and I've, I've heard you tell them publicly and privately, but, you know, the Empire State song that's coming out very soon. Yeah. I know you shared, um, Isaac, you actually told the story about Toral, like in, in a different way, because I've heard Toral tell it mm -hmm. on stage about how that song is also a healing song for you. So it's a healing. Yeah. Well, yeah, hearkening back to what Joy said, it's like about brothers and stuff. And, you know, there's an element of maybe it's being the older brother or probably more likely it's some specific contract that we have where like you know part of my life contract or here is to be here while you know to, as a as a brother for this man mm. um while he mm. you know, walks this rare path um you know through mental health um you know i i struggle with my own mental health but i i didn't get to the the the, the edge the cliff that he walked himself to uh, it wasn't my karma, but it was my karma to, and my dharma also to, to, to witness him. And I think this, um, for, for, for some, a number of journeys that we've walked together mm. and continue to. So, um, maybe, you know, he'll, he'll be there for me one day in, in a similar, um, you know, reflection, but if not, that's okay, because, um, it's been an honor. And this song, um, really kind of mm. talks to the confusion that we've seen together and also the redemption mm -hmm. um, that we feel now um, in, you know, just reclaiming. It's like collecting all the ghosts of our past mm -hmm. and honoring them and sharing them with blessings. It's kind of like the day of the dead in a way. It's like we mm -hmm. honor mm -hmm. the, the, the dead parts of us, you know, the parts of us that we marched on past. Oh, yes. Um, and and but we we kind of tend to them like they're a garden also growing and so this empire state is like well when we can do that when we can grieve in a way and also um tell our story then we're always kind of alchemically creating this empire mm. state of mind where we're seated where we've found the gift where we're in the mm. richness the riches of of actually moving through life you know doing that work you know like doing Ooh, the i work love that suggesting what's happened to us because we each have a heroic journey it doesn't look the same um but we each all of us have yeah some fascinating story to tell mm. um that within it if it's told over and over again it's medicine for for you the one who lived yes. it but also mm. others and it's just mm. i'm not saying anything new i'm just repeating what the truth seems to keep coming out and um that's what there's, Empire State is for us. As yeah, well. there's something there. Just I want to I want to touch on the mental health, and I, I just want to touch on this for a moment. I mean, none of us in this room are therapists, but there's a way that I I believe that the creative connections that we are making in my world and your world is 
healing for mental health. I feel like we have lost the community. And I, I'm trying to think about like, you know, we could discuss this all day, probably. Why is why are we at such a mental health crisis? I mean, I have two sons, both who have gone through incredible, oh my God, it's been, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to go into the stories, but you experienced it. And, and as, as young men, I experienced it as a young girl, but it's like, how, what we're doing my dream is that my hope, my vision, my, my, my true desire, I'm going to speak this to the universe right now and to everyone who's listening, is that the community that we're creating in creativity is a balm to that. Mm. It's, a nice that word. it's a beautiful word, balm. I like that. Put the balm on. I mean, yeah, put the balm on. <laughs> Who told you to put, put the balm on? <laughs> put the balm on. It's a salve. It's a balm. Well, yeah. You know, when, you know, in the world that we're currently in, you know, we often, it's, it's a, you know, it's a customary to say you're not a therapist unless you are. <laughs> but I think what's actually the safest is to speak from your experience. And uh, what's yeah. better data than that? You know, in a world that's Absolutely. just Absolutely. data. And the word data and data points. Well, experience is, <laughs> right? And <laughs> nothing wrong with data because you can gather it algorithmically. But can we gather experience? Yes. And in my experience, what made me so mentally unwell mm. you know, and it started around mm. what well, started as a kid um, and it was undiagnosed obsessive compulsive disorder. And then it went away and it came back at 23 mm. after a falling out with a friend that mirrored like the perfect storm. Right. Of the, of mm -hmm. the break of my parents um, and particularly my, our mother becoming um, unsafe. Right. Mm. And that moment sort of created another level of undigestible trauma. Mm -hmm. And this is my experience. And I've been writing about this for mm. years. I'm very much going to share more um, on sort of a, a methodology around how to be with the layers of undigested trauma that I'll be writing and sharing more in my life. Mm. Oh, I'm so and glad I that you began to share it in Embracing yes. Crazy, which is my podcast. Yeah, check um, it out. I, I will truly believe yeah. that it was in that moment that I couldn't digest the trauma. And so I slowly walked into a more critical case of disassociation. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when we can't handle something that's happened to us, we fall into a natural proclivity of dis-ease. And for yes. some of it, it's depression. For some of it, it's addictive behaviors. Yes. It's, it's um, ideation and, and psychosis. Yes. Um, for some of it's directly stuff like schizophrenia and bipolar. And of course, there is medical uh, conditions as to why this gets triggered in the body. However, mm -hmm. in my experience, it's when stuff goes undigested for long enough that it creates the right environment and conditions for us to fall further into mm -hmm. the disease that might be genetically expressed. And for me, yes. regardless of that, it was OCD. And so I sort of had a hand in it getting worse and worse. And I kind of watched almost my own movie. And uh, mm. it wasn't until 30, 31 that I had an awakening that I slowly began to turn it around. And it was in that moment that all I've done over the last 11 years is slowly done my best to digest what mm. had not mm. been faced, felt, mm and digested mm. and often that's mm. painful because we yeah. have to let ourselves feel those very things that mm. those avoidant or compulsive or impulsive behaviors were protecting us from absolutely fear. and oh. as we come back closer to the actual fire we get to the inner ring which is where the wound is <laughs> and so uh that's what i know mm. in my experience is uh the journey home mm -hmm. is often one where we allow angst to be felt angst uh yeah. wounds yes. trauma, and we begin to actually make sense not just mentally but emotionally of what we've been through absolutely we are 100 percent what you. is the self to that well it's certainly um an incredible self to that being heard being seen being held in community is another and um mm -hmm. it, there's many paths there but today Mm -hmm. um, are you leaning into that next edge of what wants to digest in you? Would be wow. the, only, so so the next question. Thank you so much for sharing that. So beautiful. I really feel that. I mean, this is what Joy and I do as well. 
working with people to digest, you know, we, we hold space in a, you know, very similar, but totally different way where, you know, sometimes in the body, someone will be dancing and moving and expressing and feeling, and then they'll lay and they'll lay down in their beautiful Shavasana, their beautiful yoga nidra, whatever we're, we're leading at that moment. And after the dance, the bliss, we call it. And then all of a sudden the breakthrough will happen. All the tears come, the shaking, yeah. a trauma memory, a something is released and they begin to digest. It, it's amazing how the digestion doesn't always happen in the moment of creativity, ah. but in the post, like when I, after I sing my song, right, I realize, yes. whoa, that was a really intense experience that happened to me. And now I can digest it. It's like, yes. and feel it. And sometimes I just, you know, cry. Like, I feel like very emotional right now talking with you as, as I always do, because we have such a sort of deep <laughs> connection here. Um, that I feel like it's okay to be on the edge of my vulnerability when I'm with you, you know, even, even when working with you at one point, um, Toral pointed something out to me that I'd never seen in myself before that really threw me right into like, oh my God, I have work to do on something that I didn't even know was there. Mm -hmm. And I'll talk more about that another time when I share with you later, but really interesting how this creativity, this process of emotionally relating to our lives from a different lens of data collection and what what's happened and why blah blah blah, blah. It, it's so powerful so resonant for us D joy don't you agree mm. yes and i also think that the creativity is a tool that has been used to create um with specific outcomes but with with this what i what, what i'm excited about is seeing art and different ways to just go into express where you don't know what the outcome is yeah. And that is where the healing happens mm. is not knowing how it's going to happen, but it is in the allowing. And I love that there's, I feel this way showing, way shower energy mm. that we've experienced. And because of that, from that felt experience through that expression, that is what really creates the safety, the sacredness mm. for others. It's not because of that we have a formula down, it's because we don't. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And we just say, show the fuck up. Yes. And let it come out. See what happens. And I See love that. Does. I'm feeling yeah. so much, um, like you said, Tony, just feeling a lot of um, similarity and just a, and resonance. And I'm really excited about what's next for you all, as well as what's for Tony and I and what we're creating. And it makes me feel good and alive and hopeful when we see this. Mm. Yes. Not, not, let's let's not give it up for hope. Resonance. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> Uh, should we write a little two second song about hope before we go and, and let joy because you haven't heard joy's voice much lately you started off joy all right joy start it oh, off my AirPods. it's all right okay, listen to go. these beautiful brothers and let's oh, do it okay. Oh my goodness. I can't wait to see you soon again. Okay. So we're going to close up today. This was such a wonderful interview. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Um, this is the create, this is the Stoke Your Creative Fire uh, interview summit. Turn your angst into art. This is the Brothers Corin. We're so grateful. We'll see you at our yeah. next interview. Um, thank you so much for being with us. Isaac and Torald, you know how much I love you. So I'm hugging you from afar. Oh, Joy, listen, thank you for singing. Oh my goodness. We believe and in the, tell us. We, we believe in the power. Tell of us how we can. Yo, oh, go ahead. 
I think we're about to say the same thing. Oh, right, 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 huh? yeah. <laughs> we're on the same page, Joy. Uh, we believe in the power of request. So if you're listening and you know there's a voice in you that needs nurturing and coaxing, and you know there might be creativity in the form of songs that have been living inside your body, mm. maybe <laughs> dwelling under your rib cage. It's okay. Begging to come out. Well, we invite you to request us, your brothers, come into our world. There's so many ways we work with people. Brothers Corin, K O R E N dot com. Write to us directly at Brothers Corin at Gmail. And we can uh, follow you on Instagram. You I'm gonna... us at the Brothers Corin. And we yes. dare you to reach out to us. Yeah. D no expectation. Come into our community. We we'll have a respond. crazy mission it's to he hear the world's song one voice at a time so you can help us mm. with that by sharing yours with us. And joining. What a beautiful mission. And I just want to say I go to the playground on Mondays, the choir once a month. I'm in the big program where I've written like eight or I wrote like 17 songs and we're going to record eight. So I cannot say enough about this. And you'll hear when my album comes out. Mm. I'll be sharing. Well, and yeah. I saw them in concert, work with them at Omega. And we oh, actually man. are going to be teaching Amazing. at Kripalu together in 2023. Yeah. And um, it just goes on and on. So follow the Brothers Corn on Instagram. I mean, everything about them. You're just going to love all their videos, all their songs, so moving. And we will see you soon. Thank you so Thank much, you Joy. Too. Thank wow. you, Tony. Thank you, Tony and Joy. Thank love you, Tony. All right. Let's do a moi. Oh my God. What? I mean, I know that's hard. Okay. What's your biggest take? <laughs> I don't know. Being in the flow. Oh. I mean, really with, with their presence, you can't fake this shit. No, you know, the, that's the my authenticity. biggest takeaway. Yeah. You have to be real, show up with, with all, even the fear, just do yeah. it because healing is in the expression. And I know we talk about being seen a lot. And, and there's always, I've always had hesitancy when I say everyone wants to be seen because I know there's days I don't want to be seen, but I want to express. Right. Mm, that's right. And that's what they really, they really, I, I really felt that from them is that the power of expression is the tool of healing. Mm, I love that. Yeah. You know, one thing I noticed that so far we've had everybody saying that we've interviewed everybody's given one piece of advice it's the same which is just do it you know just you know, do like, it just do it because like i mean we have so far everybody we've interviewed has said something like just do it commit to it do it let it out of you because you know it's like when we repress our stuff and we hold it all inside that's where dis-ease happens that's where the icky sticky Beautiful. like resisted life happens where we don't feel joy and flow. So even though they went through incredibly difficult experiences, which they didn't even talk about all of them, let me tell you what right. I've heard. But they, they talked about healed. some really key Oh, ones. they did. But they, I mean, and there's more. And and they're deep and beautiful souls who really are turning their angst into art just, just day after day. Okay. Pro I love that processing. I call it processing and they call it digesting, metabolizing, and you know, whatever the last word was, your stuff into some kind of a like a palatable continuation of life so that we're not stuck in it way back in the past mm -hmm. and i love they talked it about the body your elixir your own elixir manufactured elixir right here. oh so good so thank yeah. you everybody for watching these interviews thank you, thank we you, are Oh, we're having such an amazing experience ourselves. We literally ask people that we really want to learn from and be with and be part of because we want to be in a new culture where we all share and spread the love every which where that it's needed so that you can find your teacher and we can find our teachers and so on and so on so that we can find these communities of creati mm. creativity, healing, and love. And as we said, a little bit down the lane, we're going to be sharing with you a program that we've created, which is about turning your angst into art. And we're so excited to share it with Absolutely. everybody. So. We'll see you at the next interview. Keep watching. Yeah. Mwah.